Coach Lanning will have a couple of opening remarks, and uh, then we'll take your questions. So, Coach Lanning, how we doing? I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, you know, exciting to be talking about football this time of year. Um, obviously, very appreciative to our staff, our players, our medical staff, um, our coaches, uh, coordinating in a, in a unique time. Uh, Coach Smart talks about it all the time, having mental agility. Right now, it's kind of the new phrase in our program, uh, and our guys have handled adjustment extremely well. Uh, and really attacked uh, everything that we're trying to get accomplished in our program. Okay, let's go to the questions. Uh, maybe let's take the first one from uh, Anthony Dasher. Dash, don't see you. Let's go to uh, Mark Weiser. Unmute. Unmute. Mark, I'm mute. Here with me. All right. I thought I was unmuted, but now I'm, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Hey, Dan. I uh, want to ask you, um, I guess, starting your third season with the program here, uh, kind of, do you feel like you're kind of putting uh, down some roots um, in the community and, uh, you know, with Georgia football? I'm sorry. I, I missed that last part there, Mark. I was asking, this is your third season with the program and, and you know, kind of uh, as you coach, climb the, the career ladder, uh, you know, you, you obviously probably moved around a little bit more. Do you feel like you're putting down some roots in the, in the program and the community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and really excited to be, you, you always talk about being in a place, I'm, I've got three kids, um, my wife, Sophia and I, and you talk about being a place you'd love to raise your family. And Athens has truly been that place. Three years for me in college football, this will be the longest I've been anywhere. And sometimes it takes, that progression to get, um, you know, there in your career. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a place where I could see myself for a long time. Yeah, I was going to also ask, um, what areas in particular um, are you uh, looking to attack, uh, you know, this uh, preseason? Um, obviously, the defense put up some good numbers last year, but uh, coach is always looking for more. What, what are you looking at uh, in particular? You know, the biggest thing I think we've emphasized um, so far this offseason is the finish. Um, you know, we've talked about Havoc plays a lot on here in the past, uh, and that's still definitely a big focus for us. But uh, we want to get the ball out. We want to we want to finish. We want to impact the game by having some game changing plays uh, that we can create. And uh, our players have really embraced that so far. All right, let's go to Mike Griffith. Uh, yeah, Coach, I know there's um, obviously been a lot of attention paid. You know, statistically, your team finished really well uh, last season, and, and you played, I don't know what it was, 30 guys over 100 snaps, something something ridiculous like that. So, so I guess the question we're all asking is, is, is how do you guys get better? I, I mean, is there more to add to the toolbox? Um, you know, how do you improve on those numbers and that, those performances other than what you just said is about finishing? Ultimately, for us, it's about wins, but that was 2019. This is 2020. It really has no correlation. Um, you know, we have to start from scratch. Um, by no means are we the 85 Bears. We got a lot of work to do, um, but our guys are embracing the challenge of getting better and focusing on that. It starts with the details, right? It starts with today, not tomorrow, not the, the first game. We got to really focus on today first. Seth Emerson. Seth, you there? I'm here. Okay, go. All right, sorry. Uh, Dan, first off, Kevin Butler will be happy to hear you say that about not being the 85 Bears. <laughs> um, the When you say finish and that being the goal, is, is that part of Havoc Rate? Is that as an extension of Havoc Rate as the emphasis last year? Yeah, it's, a, it's really a combination of everything. I think, you know, football is such a unique sport in a, in a uh, standpoint that – you could win 90% of the play, and if the last 10% of the play, the wide receiver catches the ball, you didn't do your job. If you don't get to the quarterback, you might have a great pass rush move, but you don't finish on the quarterback, it doesn't matter. If you cover somebody perfectly or uh, fit a gap perfectly, but you don't make the tackle or get the ball out, um, you know, it doesn't matter. So the key to us is we're finishing on finishing 100% of the play, and even if we're behind in the first 80%, how we finish that play can really be a key to success. Did your analysis in the offseason kind of pinpoint that as a 
as something that was a little bit of a weak link last year? Well, I, you know, I, I don't know about a uh, weak link, but I think, you know, something that Coach Smart's done for a very long time and we've done for a very long time is to go, go back and say, what can we do better? And uh, that's something I think we all wanted to focus on, um, you know, when we do our self-scout and, and analyze ourselves. Let's go to Dean Leggy. <laughs> Hey, Dan, I wanted to ask you uh, what you think Kirby's learned from you in the time that y'all have been together. Uh, I have no clue. I've learned a lot from uh, Coach Smart. Um, I know I know we have a lot of fun on our side of the ball. Uh, I love coaching with the guys that we coach with. I know Coach <laughs> Smart really enjoys coaching with our staff and our players. This is a really fun group of players to coach. Um, so I think we have a great time. Um, we work really hard. Uh, and push our guys to excel, but uh, I've learned a whole lot more from Coach Smart than he's learned from me. I can promise you that. Jay Rowe? Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, obviously not asking you for to divulge state secrets or anything here, but just wanted to kind of get your impressions on defending, you know, Todd Munkin's office. I know it's only been three practice, but just kind of what he brings to the table as an office of coordinator and what kind of challenges you've seen that he can kind of, uh, um, you know, create for a defensive coordinator. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one thing I think that, that's uh, unique about Todd, I'm not going to tell you what plays we're running, right? But what's what's really fun is he's the definition of a coach that's, you know, he has a lot, obviously a lot of experience, um, knows exactly what he wants from in, in his product. Uh, you know, he's very demanding of his guys uh, in what right execution looks like. But he's also very adaptable uh, to change. Uh, the game's changed over the years, and I think you see a lot of pieces of that uh, in his offensive game plan. Let's go to William Newland. Hey, Coach. Uh, you know, Coach Smart told us that he's kind of using uh, like a peer intervention method uh, to try and kind of keep everyone on track with social distancing, mask wearing. Um, you know, have you what have, what have you said to the the older guys? Kind of um, in in line with that, and and what have you seen from uh, the dynamic on the team in that regard? I think there's a realization with our guys and what's required for us to be able to play like we want to play this year. And uh, our guys have really bought into that. Every meeting, you know, we're giving reminders. We're being very diligent and transparent as a program and the safety precautions we're taking uh, for our guys. And they've embraced that because ultimately we all have the same goal and, and what we want to achieve. Has it been at all of a, a learning curve of, of, of getting everyone on the same page about this over, over the summer? Um, you know, I think our guys have taken it uh, very serious from the beginning, and I, th I think a lot of credit goes to Ron Corson and, and our medical staff, you know, really educating our guys from day one. Um, so I think everybody's taking it serious, and, and they're trying to fall in line. You know, our strength staff's done a great job of protecting our guys. So, you know, I, I think our guys have done a good job there. Jason Butt, you have a question? Yes, uh, Coach Lanning. Um... You know, when it comes to the secondary, losing Wilson, uh, transfer, and, and Ringo to the injury, uh, are you guys having to do a lot more cross-training uh, there in the back end as a result of those two losses? You know, uh, ultimately, the way we practice gets a lot of guys a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, we, we get a ton of reps for our guys in practice, so I think the, those opportunities have already really been created through the way we structured it. Uh, we've always had, you know, whether it be two-spot drills, how we're practicing with our players, a lot of guys are getting a lot of reps, um, so it's definitely challenged our guys, but we've handled it really well. Yeah, and, and two guys in particular, um, Tyreek Stevenson, uh, is, is he getting looks, uh, more, more looks at the star position? And, uh, and then Eric Stokes, his development over the last couple of years, you know, what, what can you say about him in that regard? Yeah, ultimately, I think Eric and Tyreek have both done a good job. Um, we, uh, Tyreek is, is not the only person that gets guys, uh, you know, as far as getting multiple positions. We, we work almost all of our guys. We cross train at multiple positions uh, for a lot of reasons um, because there is going to be change. Of all years, this is where that mental agility is going to come in. Uh, we have to be prepared to work several different uh, spots. Let's go to Brandon Sedge. Hey, uh, Coach, I wanted to ask you about uh, Richard as well and his development over um, his entire career. I know, like, over the first couple of years, Kirby kept using the term uh, trap, I guess, and describing how he plays. Um, has he kind of gotten past that? And what have you seen in his uh, development here? 
Yeah, I think, you know, obviously Richard's a player that plays with, with instincts, and that shows up, and uh, what he's learned over the years is to play with those same instincts within the framework of our defense and our system. And, uh, you know, I think every single one of our play players still need to be coached, um, but Richard's production, a lot of it comes from those instincts, and he's done a good job of honing that in to fit within the system where he's able to make plays um, in every play he's supposed to make, right? And that's what we've really focused on with him. He's done a good job of that. David Pascoe, do you have a question? Hey, Dan, thanks for doing this. Uh, kind of a big picture question. I know Georgia and Clemson, I think, ranked one, two in scoring defense last year, but LSU scored like 79 points combined against those defenses. They were obviously blessed with the first round quarterback, running back, receiver, but you always hear about college football being a copycat game. What about that LSU offense do you think people may try to copycat that you've got to move forward looking at this year? Yeah, I mean, that's that was a big study uh, piece for us this offseason. Um, I think we're going to see more and more of that in our league. You know, the SEC has always been on the on the front end of development when it comes to the game. So I think there's a lot of pieces that will be carried over. We're going to see a lot of copycat plays, um, and we put a lot of focus on, you know, how, how will we defend that the best moving forward. Vance Levy, do you have a question? Yeah, Coach, thanks for doing this. Uh, you know, I think obviously your leadership is pretty well known with all the guys that came back. Uh, are you seeing – are there some particular younger guys that are showing, you know, the signs of leadership that you like to see as they are progressing to the day they will be the leaders? You know, I think that um, – yeah, Tay, I mean, obviously it's just been three days of practice, you know, so to, to start there. But – Ultimately, we have a really mature group of young guys that are eager, and I think the mental prep, while it was unique this year, um, the walkthroughs, the additional Zoom meetings, all of that created an, an opportunity for them to come in and be able to compete. So uh, I wouldn't pick out a guy in particular. Beyond that, I think we have a really solid defensive group uh, of young, uh, quality players that can come in and contribute. So Jeff Schultz, you have a question? Yeah, Dan, um, thanks for doing this. I know in the NFL, um, since there's no preseason games, coaches are adjust, have to adjust in terms of things like what they say to the media, in terms of who's playing and what spots, what they're going to do. Normally, they'd be a little more open this time of year. I, I'm just curious, since you guys don't play any non-conference games, are there any adjustments that you have to make in any way in terms of personnel that you might normally use uh, against a non-conference opponent? scheme strategy development i'm just curious if there's been any adjustment at all since you go straight into conference games well i mean ultimately that's what's unique and special about the sec obviously is every week you're going to play a real team um that being said you know every game we go into we prepare as if we have to utilize our best players uh we have to have our best plan to execute regardless of the opponent and i think that's one thing coach smart's always done a great job of so it really doesn't matter who we play uh the preparation required is uh, the same. I, I think the one key is we all know is we're going to have to be ready quick, right? We got to get ready to go play this first game. Um, and it starts, like I said, at the very beginning today uh, with that focus. But yeah, we have a, a lot of adjustments we've made, um, you know, throughout the program this year, just because of the uniqueness of, uh, you know, the pandemic and everything that takes place with that. Uh, Zach Klein, I'm not sure where you are, but do you have a question? Yeah, I'm driving back from Costco, coach. You should talk once a year. I got to lock you in. Um, a lot of alpha dogs in that defensive locker room, but, but who's the big dog? Who's the one guy that nobody else wants to get in the MMA cage with? That's a great question. Um, I'm trying to think of who I don't want to fight on defense. I, I think I'd <laughs> fight just about any of these guys. Um, no, we got a good group. I mean, look, we have a bunch of dogs, you know, and I think a, the, a, a comment that was made last year um, several times was the no-name defense, and I think it was maybe uh, taken a little bit the wrong way. Uh, in a lot of terms, what, what, when I say that, we have a lot of unselfish players. A lot of guys that want the ball in their hands at the end of the game, they want to be on the field on fourth down. Uh, there's a lot of guys on our defense I'd go to war with right now. I, I don't know if I'd pick one alpha dog, um, but we got a really good group of guys. Jim Towers? Let me unmute here. Uh, yeah, Coach, your boy, uh, talk a little bit, if you would, about Jordan Davis. Uh, I... I uh, he just seems like he's a guy that is much as there's been excitement about him. I'm not sure that he's realized the 
tremendous potential everybody talks about when they talk about him. Obviously, it's a big year for him. What's his status right now, and what's your outlook for him this fall? I have really high expectations for Jordan. Um, you know, Jordan's worked really hard. Trey Scott does a phenomenal job. Coach Williams uh, do a great job with his development. Um, but Jordan, I think, is really hungry. Um, and there's just not a lot of people born in this world that look like Jordan Davis, right? So when you look like that, there's an expectation. And I expect him to really achieve at the highest level this year, have a phenomenal season to really help our team and our defense. All right, let's take a few minutes and open up uh, for uh, anyone. Just remember to unmute when you ask your question. Hopefully we won't have too much overlap, but to go ahead and fire away any questions that you might have. And hey, I wanted to ask you, this is Muggy one more time. I wanted to ask you about uh, Richard LeCount um, and coming into his final season at Georgia. What, what do you, I mean, I guess, what's Richard's uh, been like for these last few years? How has he grown? Well, you know, I, I think in the past you, you had a guy like J.R. Reed that Richard felt very comfortable in the back end with um, J.R. And, and now you look to the right and the left and J.R. is not out there. And Richard's really um, embraced the opportunity to, to learn more, uh, communicate more, be uh, more vocal on the defense. And, and that's certainly what we're looking for from him this year. Hey, Dan, this is Connor Riley. Uh, MJ Sherman was the only linebacker prospect you guys signed in the 2020 recruiting class. What was it that you saw him as a recruit that made him such a top target for you? And what do you sort of expect from him to bring to that outside linebacker room? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, MJ's a tremendous person. He's got a great mindset. He's hungry, uh, comes from a really good family, uh, works really, really hard, and he's conscientious. Um, so, you know, all those things ultimately, and then, you know, he's got strength, power, and agility that, that we think can be a real asset for him moving forward. So excited about his development and, and to see what he can do. Hey, Coach, this is Rodney Nabolsi. Can you tell us a little bit about Jalen Carter and your initial thoughts on him? And uh, if you would also touch on your three uh, defensive linemen that you brought in from Tennessee last year, uh, Bill Norton, Tymon Mitchell, uh, those guys, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Tennessee crew, uh, you know, their development, it's it's always fun to see year one to year two. Um, and when I, when I give uh, Coach Scott credit, you know, he's done a good job with their development from a standpoint of the technique is a lot cleaner. We actually uh, did a, a player development piece yesterday in our defensive meeting where we're kind of highlighting where guys have improved. And we were able to show some film of, of time and uh, early right in practice and how he was doing something wrong, something he fixed and adjusted and then really a perfect rep. Uh, in a team run uh, setting. So it's fun seeing those guys come along. Um, Jalen Carter uh, has you know plenty to learn, um, but he's very strong. He's an explosive athlete. Uh, we definitely think he can make an impact for us. Um, it's, and it's good to see his technique continuing to get better day in and day out. Uh, he definitely makes the guys across the ball better. Coach, uh, Lewis seen kind of got some a uh, valuable experience or, or, you know, don't actually don't know how valuable it was. And that's kind of where I was going to go with this is starting those last two games last year. How much did that help him coming into this year and, and potentially being a much bigger uh, player for you guys this year in, in terms of contribution? Yeah, ultimately, one of our goals on, on defense is to play the game as many times as we can before you actually play a game, whether that be through a walkthrough rep, a practice rep, whatever it is. And I think Lewis did a phenomenal job of taking all those reps leading into last year. Um, and then when he hit the field, he was ready for his opportunity and did a great job with it. Um, so I think those you can't put a value on the game reps because that's completely different. Um, but I think you know Lewis is a guy that comes up and studies. He does extra. And I think that's paid off for him uh, in creating opportunities for him moving forward. Following up on the opening uh, question in terms of of how you feel comfortable at Georgia, how this is somewhere that, that you see yourself, um, do you remember a moment early on it might have been to where you, you felt comfortable in your role, felt comfortable around the coaching staff um, that you have? I don't, I don't remember one particular moment. I just know that people coach their entire career dreaming to coach at a place like Georgia. Um, and that was certainly the case for me. So getting the opportunity just to be here with the staff that we have um, and the players that we have is just really unique. Uh, and, and I certainly don't take that for granted. And uh, one more from me, Dean Luggy. Uh, three kids during this thing. How's that been? You know, it, it's, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. We, the, the amount of time that we were at home rather than on the road recruiting or some of the other things that you'll do within – uh, coaching has been really rewarding from a family standpoint. Um, and I, 
you know, my wife and kids, they make it work for me. And it's, uh, it's great getting to spend a lot of quality of time with them this summer. I know my wife was ready for school to start. Our boys are all back in school and uh, excited for that. And, and they are not just for what it's worth. They're not virtual learning this fall. She was ready to send them back and we are ready to roll. So, but yeah, it's been great. Dan, for you, and uh, the pandemic, as far as how much more studying did you do, whether it's other defenses, looking back, did you watch more film of you guys last year? How was just this year unique for you and what you did personally as far as kind of film study? Well, I'll, I'll say this. We figured out how to mute and unmute our Zooms a lot quicker than you guys. Uh, no offense, <laughs> but we had the, the Zoom meetings. They never stopped. And uh, it was a lot of fun as a staff to be able to connect with somebody that might be on the other side of the world, whether it be the San Diego Chargers or a high school coach in Florida, we spend a lot of time, you know, and I think the, the key in all this is when you have more time, you want to make sure that you're careful not to do too much because uh, ultimately it still comes down to tackling, right, block destruction, uh, finishing on plays. So, uh, but it was definitely very rewarding from a development standpoint as a staff for us to, to get with some other people. Pete Golding said last night that from a mental standpoint, he felt like his players are ahead of where they've been the last couple of years. Is that kind of fair to say for you with all the along those same lines with all these Zoom meetings? Yeah, ultimately, I would agree with that. Our mental prep, you know, that we've been able to create through either walkthrough Zoom meetings uh, is actually far, further along probably than our physical uh, prep as far as the, the technique uh, that's required to execute something properly. Um, getting more of those practice reps is going to be really valuable, but the men mental prep is definitely probably ahead of the curve. Uh, what in particular for each of them, you're looking to see their game uh, expand or get better? You know, I just want to see them maximize the opportunities they get um, on the field. Both of them are dynamic players. Both of them are, are very explosive and uh, do a great job there. I think they create issues for the offense with their suddenness, um, but probably more importantly, they finish, right? Those guys run to the ball. Uh, they finish twice. They work really hard on their craft. Uh, so just seeing, uh, seeing them expand their role as they move forward, uh, excited to see what they do. Coach, you mentioned uh, earlier about uh, copycat plays in LSU. How much of – I don't want to bring up too much last year's game, but how much of that was scheme versus execution? And specifically, what are some of the principles or concepts that you think you're going to see more of from different teams this year? You know, um, obviously they have phenomenal players, and you don't want to discredit you know anything they did as a, a team last year. They did a really good job. Um, you know, I think there's elements of both. You know, it, 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 ultimately we didn't uh, finish on plays. We didn't, uh, you know, we were in the right place at times and and didn't capitalize. Uh, on the same note, they had you know they do a lot of unique things with empty. Uh, you see more empty in our league now than you ever have before. Uh, you see a lot of things uh, from motion standpoint shifts. Uh, that they create, and uh, it was unique to face. But uh, moving forward, I don't know how much of that we'll see, but I know we'll be more prepared for it. Dan, uh, the term block destruction has obvious meaning. How, how do you, what, what is the technique taught with block destruction? You know, a lot of people call it block protection, and I just don't think that's a defensive term. You know, block destruction, we destroy blocks. Uh, that's kind of our mindset on defense here at Georgia, uh, so that's why we focus on that. Hey Coach, i got uh, kind of two questions for you. One, would you touch on Jalen Kimber and what you've seen in him? And then you mentioned some of the Zoom meetings. Uh, can you tell us some of the pro teams that you uh, spoke with about defensive schemes? Uh, what are there, 32 teams in the NFL? Yeah. We're probably about 32. I mean, no. No, I don't know. We talked to a lot of teams. There was a – when you, I mean, you think about it, when it was locked down, the amount yeah. of time, there was a lot of I – couldn't, I couldn't tell you one team. And, and the fact that I might speak to one – and Coach Schumann might speak to another group, and Coach Warren and Coach Smart. So we, we spoke with several teams. Uh, I wouldn't pick one out uh, specifically. Jalen's done a really good job. You can tell us all of them if you want. Yeah, yeah, sure, 32. There you go. Um, but Jalen's done a really good job, you know, from an agility standpoint. I think he's, he's still got to uh, build some bulk and get in the weight room and work hard, but he is conscientious. He really pays attention to detail. In fact, he's also on that list of guys we talk about player improvement. He did something wrong early in camp. We identified it. Coach Warren worked on it in drills. Uh, and then the next day, he makes a phenomenal play by executing the proper technique. So excited uh, to see what he does moving forward. We've got time for two more questions. Anybody? Hey, Dan, this is Connor Riley again. How has your sort of partnership with Glenn Schumann evolved, especially this offseason? 
You know, Glenn and I have been close, uh, you know, really since 2015. We both worked together at Alabama, and uh, he's a guy I really lean on a lot um, with, with everything we do. He's really critical to our organization, you know, as well as the rest of our defensive uh, coaches. But I'm, I'm very fortunate to get to coach with Glenn, uh, as well as Coach Warren and Coach Scott and, and our crew. Um, we, we mend really well together. We know each other well just because of the amount of time we have some familiarity. Uh, keeping that group together on, on our side of the ball was really big for us. Last question, anyone? Hey, Coach, can you talk a little bit about uh, Warren Brinson and some of your uh, – uh, what you've seen in him early on? You know, the biggest thing that I was looking for early in Warren uh, was effort, and he has done a really good job. You know, the, the other day we were able to point out and practice him finishing twice. The ball's thrown down uh, the field, and he's hauling butt from the line of scrimmage to finish and get in position to make a play on a wide receiver down the field. You know, his technique still has some cleaning up to do. We'd love to see him strike with those hands and can continue to develop on, from a target standpoint. But he is definitely uh, working hard to do that. Hey, thanks to everybody for uh, joining in today. Thanks to uh, Coach Lanning and everyone have a great rest of the day. Thank you guys, thanks, appreciate it. Thank you.